an alert recording in progress. <laughs> so fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us, Rachel. And I was thinking um, because all the people that he has joined us uh, today, and I know that a few more will join a few minutes later, uh, they have been practicing your recipes on Thermomix during the summer. So I wonder if, uh, I mean, you can, you can speak, uh, guys, just unmute yourself and, and speak, or you can write in the chat, what has been your favorite recipe so far? Maria, lovely to see you, looking great in green. So what has been the, your favorite re uh, recipe? Don't be shy, guys, you have Rachel Allen here. <laughs> Karen, what about you? What did you like? I know you made a lot of them. <laughs> Oh yeah, unmuting is not easy. There you go. Now you're unmuted yeah. now, Karen. Um, so I've done, I did the burgers. They were fab. Um, the risotto, I think the risotto was our favorite, but we did the, we did the cottage pie as oh. well. Um, yeah, I'll do all of them. I haven't done the apple tart yet because I'd probably eat it all in one set of <laughs> sitting. So uh, we'll see. But no, everything is fab. Oh, thanks a million, Rachel. Thank and you, thanks Karen. for coming on tonight. It's lovely to Where have you. Where are you, Karen? <laughs> uh, I'm out in Farron. In where? At Beyond Balancon. Oh, in Balancon. In Farron. Oh, yeah, you're, just yeah. Not, you're not far from here. Oh, no. Not well, I mean, not that far, yeah. Oh, someone no. just put up the scones. The scones. Yeah. I... Oh, they were fab, too. <laughs> <laughs> I must <Yeah>. say, <clears throat> they have been... I think they have been, for me, one of the biggest revelations yeah. because if you had said to me before, oh, you can make them, you can make scones in a machine, they'll be perfect every time, I would have said, no, someone, where else? Um, someone's just putting up something from Yvonne. Um, the scones, they just come out light and perfect every single time. And I find, I find that absolutely just incredible. Just, you know, it's just a few seconds and that's it. You have just the, the most amazing dough. And so it kind of, it, well, it just makes them totally foolproof, doesn't it? It's just, yeah, yeah it saves so much <laughs> can't time. Go wrong with it. I mean, we have to thank you, uh, Karen, because you have been supporting all our events in the very beginning. <laughs> you. Rachel, you need to know that thank she you, actually, Karen. She, she won one of your signed books. She won it in the oh, last- Oh, did you, Karen? Yes. The so there you one. go. <laughs> and oh, we need to meet each other, ladies. For I hope so. <laughs> in the class today, remember, take pictures of what we are going to cook tonight. Tag Rachel Allen Cook in Instagram or on Facebook. And there is Please. one more book that we're going to raffle in the next couple of days. So make sure to tag Rachel with the pictures from your recipes tonight. Thank you, Sarah. Lovely. Yeah. So, Rachel, before we, we get cracking, I just wanted to, to ask you because, uh, you know, you are such an amazing cook. You are so experienced. You have been doing this for so long. Um, how do you find, like you were mentioning that, for example, scones are always perfect when you use a Thermomix. So how do you find that Thermomix is a tool for you? Because somebody could argue, she doesn't need a Thermomix. She's an amazing cook anyway. So how does it help you? Oh my goodness, well, well, time is always a big issue, isn't it? You know, that, that really is. So like for things like custards, scones, all those things that you can say, right, that's in there, that's done. Now I can get on with something else because I, I do cook quite a lot. So obviously, <laughs> so, so, it's, <laughs> so it's just, it's time. Time is just, is a massive thing. Yeah. It really is. You know, that's that I just love to be able to cook lots of good food, but you're not compromising on the quality when you're cooking it in the thermomix. And that's for cool. me, that's just, you know, the ideal thing. And Rachel, for those people that sometimes, you know, like, oh my God, you're a chef, you know how to cook. I don't know how to cook. What advice could we give them? Could we share with them to go and just try it? I know you have a lot of students that go for the first time, get into a professional kitchen. What advice, advice would you give to others? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. I think it's definitely start with some types of food that you love, that you love to eat. You know the way some people say, oh yeah, I think I should really try baking and I, I should be good at baking. And then I say, well, do you like eating the things that you're baking? No. It's like, well, that's not a good thing to start with. Do you know what I mean? So start with something that you like eating. 
And then that definitely makes a difference. You know, so much more thought, I think, will go into it. I'm seeing another Yvonne on her IG. Oh. Um, so, so I think it's definitely start with something that you love. Um, if possible, where possible, you know, the best produce, that's always going to make a difference, really. And, um, and then this is, I mean, because I'm preaching to the converted anyway, because with Thermomix, you're cooking everything. <laughs> so you're, you're starting from scratch, but then you don't have just the huge big time constraint because on the, in the Thermomix, it's, it's on, it's being stirred, it's cooking, you know, and you're not standing, whisking it and, and mixing it. So you can be so much braver. You know, so many people will say to me, oh, I would never attempt shoe pastry or a creme patissiere by hand, but then the Thermomix, like it's, yeah. <laughs> yes, and that's something difficult to do, mm-hmm. but that apple tart that you did is so simple and so tasty. Oh, thank you, Maria. Have to, everybody will have to give it a try because there's no way you can do anything wrong with that. And it will be a fantastic dessert after a nice dinner on a Sunday, or if you want to go to someone's friend's house and bring some nice dessert. And it's really quickly to do and it's really tasty. So, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maria. Thank you. There you go. You, you have a lot of fans loving all your oh, yeah. advice, Rachel. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> the songs are a big winner. We have actually an Italian lady attending the class, uh, Chiara, and she says that she has to try the, the risotto because she's she's Italian, so she knows what she's talking about. That's quite well, scary. We even, we even uh, adopted one of your recipes in one of our classes, one of your cocktails. It was really nice. Yeah, the cocktail oh, good one. <laughs> I'm the customer, what can I say? <laughs> well, also, I mean, a big thank you to all of you for trying them, but and also to Sarah for driving all this. Sarah was texting me going, yay, and being so enthusiastic, and thank you so much. Yeah. And well, you know, as Desiree was saying, we love sharing with others. They love for cooking, and cooking with ceremonies, but once people get into the kitchen and they try yeah. for the first time, sometimes it can be challenging starting, but if you have another pair of hands in the kitchen, like in this case, the thermo is, is fantastic. Yeah. For everybody else, if they want to go, you know where to find Rachel. I'm not even going to share her Instagram or Facebook. You all know where she is or go into the cookery school. Rachel has been fantastic to have you tonight. Thank you Thank so you. much. And I look forward Sorry. to meeting you in person. Yeah, yeah me too. Before you go, Thank Rachel, you. can we take a, a screenshot of everybody? I mean, I'm going to... Yes, that's a great idea. idea. I'm going to remove everybody's spotlight so we are all on the same uh, size. Okay, so everybody who wants to be with Rachel Allen on a, on a Zoom a screenshot, put <laughs> your cameras on and put your best smile. And I'm going to, oh my goodness, I will have to take actually two pictures because there are two screens. There are okay. so many. There are so okay, many so. of them. That's fantastic. Hi, everybody. <laughs> there you go that's one sorry bear with me i'm going to put it somewhere so i don't lose it fantastic <laughs> and then we have the other screen again smile everybody again <laughs> fantastic thank you so much rachel now everybody in the class can say that they have a selfie with rachel allen <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. thank you and sara thank you for being so patient with me <laughs> sorry and Hello, I, are you I, <laughs> One of the things we want to do, uh, Maria, Desiree, and I, is to visit you in Balimalu. So I'll organize something and we can get okay. to go and meet you in person. Thank you. Happy cooking. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a lovely evening. Bye, Rachel. Enjoy your evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Hey, Maria. Okay. What are we going to cook with them tonight? Okay, so I'm going to start it first. Ooh. Right. So we're gonna see. Thing. Okay. So we have two teams: oh, yeah. Team Risotto and Team Cottage Pie. How many people are cooking with us? Let's see. Let's find out in the uh, comments box what okay. are they cooking, what recipe have I they have... chosen. We sent there all the ingredients. Go. You have it in your screens, guys. So please answer the poll. <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. Now that Rachel Allen is gone, you can be honest. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? <laughs> So can everybody see the poll on your screens? Yes, we have it. I don't have it, sorry. <laughs> Come on guys, don't be shy. So far only one person has participated. Yeah. 
What's Rachel Allen going to say? <laughs> Lovely, great, six people, fantastic. So is many people cooking with us tonight? I don't see the, the question though in my yes. screen. Trini, put it in comments. What are you cooking? The risotto or risotto? risotto. Yeah, risotto. risotto. Perfect. So we have we have six people cooking cottage pie, five people risotto, one person apple pie, Mercedes is cooking risotto, Trini is cooking <laughs> risotto. Yeah, I love it. So Maria is going to start with the cottage pie with the first step. So cottage pie people, get ready. Maria, all to you. One second, trying to get rid of this so I can see you all. One minute. Okay. So I, okay, here we go again. One minute. This is it. There are all the things coming up in front of the screen and I cannot see. One minute. There. Hopefully <laughs> so. Right. So as always, uh, uh, speed is my thing. I'm a speedy Martinez. What can I say? So when we did a recipe that Rachel did with the cottage pie, I have to a few little things in order for me to go a little bit faster. So mm, the recipe, the original recipe starts by grating the cheese. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to start by chopping the kale, if you want to use kale. In my case, I'm using um, cabbage. So I'm going to put the cabbage in my um, thermomix bowl, okay? And I'm and going the to same chop for team, team risotto, okay? If you're gonna be doing the risotto uh, with the cabbage, you can also follow Maria's instructions. One sec, I lost my top here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm putting my cabbage, or if you're using kale, your kale, and we're doing that as the first step. So we put that in the thermomix bowl. I'm after washing it. And then you're going to do 20 seconds, a speed five. And that is going to chop your cabbage, okay? You don't have to do it by hand. So 20 seconds. Here we go, at the speed five. That's that. You don't have to do it by hand. It's much faster. And then what do you do? So, oops, I think I did chop it a little bit too much this time. Okay. I did chop it a little bit too much. That's when I happened. I think I give it a bit of five and a half. So it came a little bit uh, smaller, but uh, do it at the speed four instead of the speed five. Okay. So then what you do, you put it into your, um, into your baroma this. Okay. So when you're doing small pieces, you don't want to waste anything. So a little trick is to put your bowl inside the water, you know, under your tap. Okay. Give it a little bit of a ring. So then you get all the little pieces. And then you're just going to use your Varoma dish as a colander. So then I'm going to go over the sink. I will do it. Pour my water with the little bits inside. And then- So that's a great way of washing as well as chopping. What a great idea, okay. Maria, using the aroma, yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm not wasting anything of my, uh, of my cabbage. And on the other hand, something to remember, when you're doing the steaming, if the ingredients are wet, the steam distributes better and it's better cooked, okay? I have it here, I put my top. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to fill my bowl. Remember that inside of the bowl, there are the marks, half a liter, liter and a half, and so on. So I'm just going to put, without measuring, one liter of water. Because what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put my potatoes at the same time that I'm doing my kale or my cabbage. So what I'm going to do to do that, uh, if you don't have a friend or a second or a second thermomix or whatever, you will have to follow the recipe and cook the meat first, like always. And then you put that meat into your uh, container that you are going to put into the oven, and then you will be cooking your potato, no problem. And you can do the same as I'm doing now. But if you have the friend, you can chop your uh, cabbage first, put one liter of water in here, then you have your potatoes 
a chop inside of the mess of the cement basket and you put that inside and then you put this in your fridge and then you're saving a little bit more time so i put my potatoes in the cement basket one sec yeah then i put my varoma with my cabbage in here and then i'm going to program this for let's say 25 minutes oops one sec one minute so i'm going to go 25 minutes yeah one thing is the potatoes that maria is using are very flowery potatoes so that's why she's yes. going for 25 minutes okay yes. if well, we're having hot it, one thing to remember when you're doing the famous mask you know, there are different methods to do the mash. But one thing to remember that is very important, the potatoes have to be floury. So I'm using the Mary Pipes, okay? So then we just put 25 minutes, we'll start with that one. And then as the, one sec, as the temperature, I go all the way of aroma. And then for the speed, we can go speed one, for example. And that's cooking away. Well, I'm continuing with my recipe to do the rest of the, of the filling for the cottage pie, okay? Let's ask people what, potatoes have they bought put it in comments so we can also help you to identify when you are doing mashed potatoes like maria was saying if they're flurry or the pipes potatoes then it's between 25 to 30 you might need a little bit longer if you are using different ones tonight exactly because uh, the roosters uh, they are a little bit more in uh, hard so then you might have to put them for longer while the flowery potatoes like the made pipes they are easier to handle okay so then you will do it faster because you don't require so much time, okay? okay? So then I'm going to continue back to my recipe as the recipe that you have. So the first step that they say is that you're going to grate the cheese. So I have a dry bowl and around 100 grams of cheese and I'm going to put my cheese in the bowl and then I'm going to program my thermomix for 10 seconds, for example. Yeah, Maria, team risotto. We are also joining Maria, okay? okay. So, you also have the cheese. In this case, it's cheddar cheese that uh, that's what same. Rachel used to give the risotto an Irish twist. So the same. You have cheddar grams. cheese as well, yes. So it's yeah, the same. 100 grams, five seconds, speed age. So if you have the scales from them all, or if you have already chopped it like me, we'll add it there. I have the scales on of zero, so I'm gonna add my 100 grams of cheese. <coughs> cheese and we'll do it five seconds of speed it. and maria show them the result so my cheese is for putting over the over the the cottage pie when it's going into the oven so i just can you see this this cheese is not parmesan if you are doing the parmesan cheese it's it's um it's the drier cheese so it's more uh, it's more dusty this one, because it's a creamy cheese, is a little bit more wet, but that's fine because it's going to go over your uh, container or over your dish inside of the oven, okay? So it's actually a really good tip that you just gave there. If it had been uh, the Parmesan cheese, it's a lot harder. So for those of you that are using maybe the thermomix today manually, is instead of the speed eight, it will be a speed 10. Yeah. And that's one thing actually we could ask them this today in the chat. Does people normally cook recipes follow Cookidoo, the platform that we have with all the recipes, or do they do as well their own manual recipes converted like the one here with Rachel tonight? Is the CD going to do a poll or will I continue? No, I'm asking on the chat, Maria, you can continue, no problem. Oh, okay, okay, sorry about that. Okay, so now I have done my cheese, I put it into a bowl and I reserve it for later. So now what we are going to do is we, have, we need a garlic glove into the Thermomix bowl. Around the recipe says around 100 grams of onion. You just get a medium onion, chop it in quarters and into your a thermomix bowl, and then the recipe says roughly 100 grams of carrots. So there are my carrots, and I just put them into my thermomix bowl. Also, we are going to need for this recipe 
my my rosemary plant is uh, really going very bad. I think I'm using it too much. So you just get a little bit of the rosemary leaves. Yes. And yes. put it into your thermomix bowl. And then we are going to put 15 grams of olive oil. Of course, I'm in Spanish, so I'm going to be extra virgin olive oil. So just 15 grams. So remember, and if you're cooking manually, you bring up the scales. So remember how to do that. If you're cooking manually, if you're in the main screen, just yes, slide to one side. You have all your uh, functions and just press on the scale. And that's going to be 15 grams. Okay, there we go. And now we are going to chop all this. If I can find the top of my thermometer, here it is. For five seconds, or uh, yeah, five seconds, a speed five, okay? So you can see. And um, one thing, Maria, for those of you that are doing the risotto, I'm gonna give you two options here. One is to do the bacon, and it's gonna be cooking at the same time as Maria, or if you want to do the vegetarian option, like I'm gonna be making tonight, we'll skip the part of the bacon that Rachel did in the recipe, okay? So you have the option. If you wanted to do the bacon, uh, Desiree can put the comments, uh, what are the steps? It's 150 grams, or if not, following, um, waiting another more, few minutes until Maria is done. Okay, so I'm just going to chop this five seconds at five, okay? So we have a lot of different opinions. There is people that do a bit of both, people that only use cookie dough so far. And then Karen is saying that you are much braver. That's fantastic, Karen. And you were, <laughs> we really put you literally on the spot today, huh? <laughs> That's okay. I love it. So, so yeah, we have a bit of everything. So maybe ladies, I know that you have already thought about this, Sarah and Maria, but if you can have a, if you can give a few of your, of your, start top tips of when you're adapting your own recipes for those who still are not too daring. Yeah, we will, we will, we'll do that. So one little tip I will always say when you are chopping, always use your spatula to push the ingredients down because when they chop, they tend to go up. So then when you are saute, everything is at the bottom of the bowl. So it's much nicer, okay? So then you put your bowl back in. And okay, when you saute, normally you do you do it in very low temperature, uh, sorry, speeds, right? So all the recipe tells you to put the measuring cup on. Uh, the trick here will be to take it off when you are just saute because there is more steam coming out. And then, the, for example, the, the, in this case, the onion won't cook in its own juices. So it's much better, okay? So always for saute, we are going to put five minutes. And saute is always around 90, 90 or 100, around those temperatures. If you are trying your own recipes. And a speed one. I'm going to put 100, okay? And a speed one. For those of you doing the bacon, is that what Maria just said? Okay. So Mercedes is asking, what are those two different ways to do with the bacon, Sara? Okay, so the bacon is 150 uh, grams, have it in uh, little cubes, okay? 15 minutes, varoma temperature, reverse speed or reverse blade, okay? So the blade, instead of going clockwise, it'll go anti-clockwise, so you will not chop the bacon and you'll have the little uh, squares and then a spoon speed. One of the things, uh, I don't know if you noticed in this, step there is no oil in my case i would put a little bit of oil so then you are frying the bacon otherwise if you don't put any oil it's going to be more kind of watery so i would say maybe five uh, grams or 10 grams of um uh, 10 grams of olive oil with the 150 of bacon if you want a more healthier version i wouldn't put any um oil at all maybe a bit of water. And this is one thing that we get asked many times. It's like, oh, I find some of the recipes, they have a lot of oil. What can I do? Reduce it to your liking and maybe sometimes adapting it with water. The flavor might be a slightly different, okay? Particularly, for example, if you are doing onions, but that's why it's the good difference between the TM5 and the TM6. The TM5, you kind of cook steamed onions, 
with the TM6, you can caramelize onions and it's to do with the temperature and all the uses is the onion, the sweet from the onions and water. So keep that in mind when you are cooking. Thank you, Billy. Maria, so your vegetables are sauteing, right? Yes, my vegetables are sauteed and my potatoes and my, and my cabbage are cooking on the other side. So I'm having these two in parallel. Fantastic. Well, for those of you that are doing the risotto, here is where, in your case, you are doing the bacon. In my case, I'm gonna step and go to the next step, okay? So what it is, is cooking the uh, vegetables, uh, the cabbage, and here is where we put a little bit of oil. Now, one thing you could do, okay? Rachel didn't do it like this, but here is where we wanted to give you our tips or experience. You could actually fry the cabbage and the actual uh, um, bacon together. Like you would do probably on, on the pot. So think about that. Sometimes with thermomix, you can maximize the time that you are using it by doing it together. If you follow her recipe in the video, she did it in two steps. To save time, I would combine two together. So I'm gonna put the um, cabbage and I'm gonna start cooking it in the French, so that way I have enough time and the other bowl to use with you for the uh, apple tart as well. So if you put in the cabbage that we caught already, we are gonna add oil and salt. So let me do that. I add the oil. And the one thing when you are doing the oil, if you do it manually, set on the scales, and in this case it's 15 grams. I'm gonna go to 10. And then if anything, add a bit extra. With a very steady hand, the oil you always know, it takes a little bit sometimes of uh, that extra time to add up. So I'm gonna go to 10, it goes to 12, and just a tiny bit more, I go to 15. And a little bit of salt to your own taste. And with the cabbage, I'm gonna cook them now. Now, I could cook it in the thermomix, or I could actually go and cook it in the frame. And this is one of the things I find, not even in the frame, having the two bowls is so handy. So in my case, I'm gonna close it. And the cabbage, we're gonna be cooking it for 10 minutes. Varoma, reverse and a spoon of speed. So do you see how these and the bacon, I just gave the steps was the exact same. So if you have put the bacon and you want to put the cabbage, I want to try it. If you are doing the vegetarian option, let's just do the uh, cabbage now. Maria, off to you. Okay, I still have around 25 seconds, but what I will tell you, in the next step, we have to put the mince meat, right? So what I will always suggest when you're cooking meat, it's good to take it out from the fridge a little bit and let it a little bit to room temperature. And you know the way that sometimes you might buy it in like a, in a package and the meat is of compound together. So it's good to put it into a bowl and break it a little bit before you put it into the thermomix bowl. Mm -hmm. So then it's easier uh, and it's better, okay? So there is that. I'll, I'll try to show you it. I don't know if you can see, but it's also taste. That's lovely here. I try not to not to pour all the contents on the thermomix on top of my laptop. It has happened before. Right. So then the next thing that the recipe says is 500 grams of mince meat. Mm. There are, I have three hungry teenagers, so I never follow a recipe in quantities. I always chance it a little bit more. And in this case, this recipe is perfect for that. You can put more quantity. I, I the other day I put like 800 and something, and it worked very well. So this time it's around. 700, so I just put this into the thermomix bowl, okay? All my mints go in, okay? Then the recipe says to put around 125 of mushrooms, a small little mushroom. I do have a small little mushroom. So they are small, just a quarter them. In my case, I slice them a little bit bigger. But it's up to you, depending how you like it. So those mushrooms go in as well. Then the recipe says to use around 15 grams of uh, tomato paste. So I have my tomato paste here ready too. Then you have to use as well a stock. 
And if the stock is fantastic to do the thermometer, you can do um, chicken stock, vegetable stock, and it's really nice. And what you do, once you do it, you will never buy it because, for example, in the vegetable stock, it's all vegetables. And you can also be a little bit sustainable because when you're using things like broccoli and you have the, the trunk of the broccoli, you can wash those ones, cut them and slice them, and put them in your freezer. So then when you are adding in vegetables to do, for example, your vegetable uh, stock, you can add some of these pieces of broccoli as part of your vegetables. So then it's much better. What I normally do is I put a small, because it's a big quantity when it comes out, I put a little bit in a jar in the fridge and the rest, I put them in ice cubes in the freezer. So as I'm putting, as I'm going to freeze it, I also reduce a little bit the amount of salt because the salt is basically to preserve it. When you're going to freeze it, it doesn't really matter and it lasts longer as well. So these are the little tricks that I will do, okay? But the flavor is unbelievable and it's because it's all natural ingredients. There's no additives or, or preservatives or anything like that. So stocks is what I will recommend you that if you haven't done it, to give it a go because it's very, very easy, okay? And one thing, Maria, if, you, if anybody is in the class doing the vegetarian, okay, of the cottage pie, what I did and I tried it, it's going to be with mushrooms. When Maria is adding now the minced meat, you can add the same with mushrooms. The one caveat I'm going to say is think about that mushrooms have a lot of water. So here is where you can adapt the recipe. When well, Maria, how much are you adding now? Well, uh, I have done this recipe before, so and I went very generous in the water. So then what happened is good, for example, if you have to rush out and you have to leave your cottage pie in the in the oven, because then it doesn't dry and it really, really gets very nice. And it's very nice and juicy, it's not dry. But you have to take into account that you're going to put a I cannot pronounce this Worcestershire sauce or whatever. I it's know, called. no one can. Well, no one from Spain. It's a least. challenge. <laughs> we need and a native speaker. The tomato uh, and the tomato will have water as well. So definitely, if you are using the mushrooms with 50 grams of water, yeah. you have plenty. Yes. Yeah. And that's where you need to start looking at when you are adapting recipes or when you are creating your own recipes. Think about the ingredients. If the ingredients are maybe uh, very watery vegetables, and particularly if they are fresh, then reduce the time, or in this case, is more of the or the quantities. So the water, Valerie, I know you are doing it, the mushroom one, add a little bit less. Like Maria said, 50 to 70 of water, okay? Um, Trevor is asking, should we try red lentils for protein? Yeah, or chickpeas as well. Uh, it work really, really well. Okay. Okay, any other questions in the chat? Desire, you are answering all of them, aren't you, more or less? Yes, I think so. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, my hands are wet with, from the tomato, one minute. So I have done, I just recap, I have put my beef, my mince, my mushrooms, my stove, a little bit of water, because I put a little bit more meat as the recipe says, I put around 140, okay? Then I put my tomato puree, my, Worse I sauce. Okay. <laughs> well done, Maria. <laughs> the tin of tomatoes. And of course, you go on your sauce. So you go put as, as little or as much as you like. And also, of course, black pepper. The good thing of this, remember, like in the video, for example, what um, Rachel does is that she put it a little bit. And then when the, the, the whole thing is cooked, she tastes it. And if you need that it needs more seasoning, you can always add it later because if you put too much, you cannot take it out, but you can always add later, okay? So that's something to take into account. So I have everything on here. And then the recipe says to put your mess simmering basket on top. So that's what does is that allows more steam to come out. But remember that my messing basket is in my friend cooking the potatoes, so I don't have it available. So instead, I'm going to use my splash guard because it has more holes that the, uh, put it on the measuring cup and it will allow to, the steam to escape. So then um, there's not so much uh, water, it's much nicer, okay? That's so we are going to do this for 20 minutes. So here we go, 20 minutes. 
at the speed for a minute. Oh, I went there. 20, 20, 20. That's the problem of being upside down at 100 degrees. Okay. And I'm going to do a spoon speed. So remember, that's the very first one, the one that is a little spoon. This is very soft movement. And that's it. And yes, I can go and uh, in a normal situation, I can go and open the bottle of wine because it's Friday today. <laughs> One of the things with this recipe, I have to say, uh, I was surprised when Rachel did the mince meat in the pan, but it's true that the flavor might be a little bit different, okay? So one of the things is the 20 minutes, why go and have them on the pan? Myself and Maria, when we were looking at this, we were like, no, let's put everything in the thermomix. I have to say the rosemary give it a really, really nice flavor. And if, like me, you forget to remove the measuring cup, it will be a little bit watery. But if you use the simmering basket or, like Maria said, the splash guard, the splash guard basically is the same as using the simmering basket. It's in the TM6, TM5 don't have that. How it works is you place it on top and it's going to go and on the actual arms, it's going to lock it. So for those of you that don't have the splash guard, you can use the uh, simmering basket or if you want to buy you can get it. the TM6 one will also work for the TM5. So my cabbage is nearly, nearly ready. What we're gonna do next is start getting ready the onions, butter, and salt and pepper. All the recipes when you are adapting them, when you are creating your own ones, they all tend to follow the same uh, steps, chopping ingredients, sauteing them, and then cooking. Maria's recipe and my recipe are really, really similar. One is going to be more kind of vegetable based and then the mashed potato for proteins. My one is going to be vegetables and then the rice for carbs. So think about that. And with her potatoes will be the same carbs. So always following chopping, cooking, sauteing, cooking. And then sometimes it might be at the end adding a little bit extra for flavor. Uh, one thing I'm going to say for those of you who are doing the vegetarian option with uh, me for the risotto, Instead of using the uh, bacon, what I'm gonna use is the dry, I'm out of here. It's called dry crisps, crisps fried onions. Why? Because I felt with the cabbage and the risotto was a little bit bland. It needed a little bit of a kick of flavor. So these uh, fried uh, onions give that flavor and also give it that crunchiness. If you don't have it, I got it today in the English market in uh, Mr. Bell's, but if you don't have it, what you could have as well uh, today is uh, maybe maybe you could roast some pine nuts or maybe some sort of nuts to give it that a bit of crunch when you are going to be biting into the, the rice would be really nice as well. I did it with pine nuts the other day and it was really nice. Or if anybody have maybe frozen peas, we can add them towards the end as well for a bit of color and that crunchiness. But if you, not, don't have, yeah, you don't have to be afraid of experiment. Sometimes yeah. there might be an ingredient that you don't like and you want to swap it for something else. That's why it, sometimes it comes from the Facebook group that we have, because some people uh, might want to try something different because they don't like the ingredients or they kind of have to. So it's interesting that we can, um, that we are able to share our ideas and our experimentation sometimes. But sometimes experiments come by pure chance as well. So, um, and that's why to use the group is good. So if you have a recipe that you like, because it's uh, quick, it's cheap, it's tasty, please don't be shy. Share it with all of us, because all of us would like probably to try it as well. Or if uh, for whatever reason you cannot eat any of the ingredients, and you, like in this case, uh, want to substitute with the onions, you know, give us ideas that we can do the same. Other people in your situation can do the same, because at the end of the day, we are a community and we are here to help each other and to, to make the best of it, really. So we can enjoy nice food and, and at the end of the day, okay? And that's what we, we love is we learn from making a lot of errors and then learning and sharing. And sometimes Maria will give me tips that I didn't think about. And we both tried these recipes a couple of times during the last week. Uh, so we perfection them by making them two or three times each. So I'm gonna go now, okay? And I'm gonna put the onions. There is a Facebook group, Yvonne, it's called Our Cooking Journey. Uh, the onions, so it's 100 grams of onions. 
I have them chopped, but usually I don't even just for today's class. I just peel the onion, have it, only have an in. So I'm gonna put the onions. I'm gonna put 30 grams of butter. And in this case, I had it out, so it's very soft. And also a bit of salt and pepper. Again, to your own taste. This is gonna be the start of now the risotto. Salt and pepper, and we're gonna cook it for, um, first we're gonna chop it for three seconds. So let me chop it for three seconds at a speed six. Always a speed three, a speed five to six when you are chopping onions or even uh, maybe pepper. So three seconds, a speed six. And now cook it for five minutes at 100 degrees. So Maria, I think what I'll do is I'll move it to my friend. Okay, so for those of you that are making it, now cook the onions for five minutes at 100 degrees at a speed one. For those of you that want to try the apple tart, now it's time to start making it. So will we do that? Let me put the so bread. Before we, we do that, we are, I'm going to do, I'm going to check that my potatoes are done. Or yeah, I'm check, check the bread. We are going to do it. <laughs> Sara, Mercedes asks if they add the spring, on, the spring onions to the bowl with bacon and cabbage at this point. No, sorry, apologies, uh, Mercedes. The bacon and cabbage, set it aside. We'll do the uh, saute the onions and do the rice and then the bacon and cabbage will come towards the end of the, of the recipe. Uh, for now, leave it out, uh, otherwise we'll be frying twice. The, we're gonna make like the start of the um, risotto. So in that vegetable. case, okay. Both sort of vegetable, yeah. Great. I'm going to launch another poll about the splash guards. There is a demonstration in Mahon Point to, tomorrow. Yes, I will explain about that now. Uh, I don't know if you are Mary or Trevor because you are signing like Mary and Trevor, but yes, yeah, we, we'll Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary. Okay, Mary. Uh, before that, I'm going to launch another poll about the splash guards. If you can please answer. It's just to see if you have it. I mean, because if you have a TM6, then you have a, a splash guard because it comes in the box. But also those of you who have a TM5, you can also have a splash guard. You can buy it separately. It's not expensive actually. But I wonder uh, even if you have it, if you use it often. So I have kind of like, okay, everybody has a splash guard, great. And then out of everybody, 67% use it often and 33% of those who answered the poll uh, don't okay so the as maria showed before and that's why I'm, i did the poll i think it's it's a good point uh, actually you uh, can use the splash guard for many many recipes not only for those what is um required so anytime like maria did so you have the results here you can see them in your screen every time that the recipe says put the simmering basket on top of the lid you can put the splash guard instead, which actually, in my opinion, it even looks better. Uh, and sometimes you might have a bit of, um, you might have some kitchen units kind of like on top of the thermomix, so the splash guard fits much better. I also use it, this is just me in my, in my head, but sometimes when I need to um, bring things out from the boil, for example, if I'm poaching eggs in a pan, I, I poach eggs in a pan, sometimes if my thermomix is busy, I bring them out into the splash guard. I use it as a little strainer so the, the eggs are not uh, carrying as much water. So just use it, take it out and use it for anything. If you need to strain something that is a small amount, if you need to rinse a few blueberries, I actually rinse them in the splash guard because it's just narrower and it's, not, it's shallower. So just don't be shy, just use it for anything. Obviously when the recipe says to use it for, um, to put the splash guard, do it. But in any other recipe that requires the simmering basket on top or for a bit of rinsing, don't be shy and use it. If you have a TN6, you definitely have to use the splash guard if you are using the high temperature for uh, frying. So it's compulsory because it's a safety feature, okay? So uh, if, the if the recipe tells you to do it, please do it. <laughs> it will only show the, the image. 
So for those of you that are making the cake with us tonight, uh, let's like what Rachel said, in 20 seconds, we have the apple tart, the base. Can I, the done. Are you going to do the cake now? Because my potatoes are done. Do what you prefer. Ah, your potatoes are done as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, done. Oh, yeah. fantastic. Okay. okay, well, then work away with the potatoes. Yeah. Okay, Do. so then we can put this one in the oven. So, first three, when you are using the varoma, never open towards you or you will have a facia. Open always. I'm going to show you so you can see the steam. The lid away from you. Can you see all that steam? <laughs> So that's the trick to do it. Perfect. And then to remove, I said, I have another spatula here someplace. To remove your basket from the thermomix board, remember that the, the, the spatula has a little hook that you put it here, and then you can take it out without burning yourself. I'm, I'm a little way around, but it's okay. So then what I do is you remove the water that is in your bowl, okay? And here is where the, oops, when, um, when you're going to do your mass, everybody will have their own taste. You can put milk, you can put cheese, you can put cream, salt and pepper, nutmeg, whatever you like. So the first thing to do is to put the butterfly into your bowl. So how you put the butterfly, can you see that the butterfly actually doesn't go in the same direction as the blades? It goes where there are no blades. And that's the right way to put it. Okay. Then, Let me show them, Maria, because I have it here. Okay. So okay. yeah, guys, these are the blades. And do you see the blades? There is one part is longer. The butterfly, in order to lock it, you're gonna place it before the long part, place it in, and then turn it slightly. So what is gonna happen is the little space here on the butterfly, and I show you, this is really easy to see. You see there, that little space that will go under the actual blades, so it locks it, and look, I can't even hold it. That's how you know, look where my hand is. That's how you know that you have locked it properly, okay? So if you didn't know that, sometimes if it goes and then it moves, uh, that's how you will do it, okay? And Maria, you're gonna be mashing the potatoes for them. So for those of you that want to start with the cake, we can, do it now while Maria is getting everything ready for the potatoes. So, so uh, what we're gonna uh, need is, yeah, Maria? Yeah, so yeah. I, I would just uh, continue as you were talking. So I have put my butter in, again, your iris, as much butter as you like. And then you can put, uh, you can put your salt and pepper. And I'm going to put um, some milk. Um, my my uh, scale is with sorry, my Sorry, sorry, Maria, for interrupting. It's just that some people are a bit confused. So you don't need to uh, make only one recipe. If you want to make more than one, and you have two bowls and you have the ingredients, of course, you can go now and do the apple okay, yeah, and enjoy. Yeah. That's that's what I was saying before. If you only have, if you don't have the friend, what you always do, you cook the meat first. In this case, the meat is going to go into your into your bowl that goes into the oven. So you just put it in there and then you cook your potatoes. In my case, with the friend, I was able to cook both of them at the same time. So then my potatoes are ready, so I'm just, while this one, my meat is finishing, and just continue with my potatoes. So going back to the potatoes, I get rid of the water, put the butterfly in, put my cooked potatoes, salt, pepper, butter, and roughly I'm going to put a little, not a full cup, to say of my of me, as I was saying before, you can at this stage you can put anything you like, me, cream, a little more, and I'm going to add my cold panel that is already cooked in here, okay, in here. So for those of you that have been using the kale, some of you have been using uh, uh, cabbage. Once the meat is cooked, you'll be able to do the potatoes like Maria did and then add the cabbage or the kale. Uh, Rachel used kale, uh, Maria prefer the cabbage. I also prefer the cabbage. And for those of you that are trying the risotto today, you're gonna have a little bit of cabbage leftover. So maybe tomorrow you want to do uh, the colcano mash with cabbage instead of kale. So to let uh, Sarah continue with the recipe, uh, because I am, my thermomix is still busy, 
when my thermomix will be finished, I will finish my potatoes and I will just put them for three, speed three, for around 20 seconds. Because remember, the butterfly is inside and you cannot put the butterfly more than a speed four, otherwise you will break it. So this is something to remember. A speed three, three and a half, four the maximum. And then I will show you the result when that's finished. So I let Sarah to continue with first. Okay? Perfect. So my onions are done. Now we'll add the rice. So it'll be the 400 grams of rice. So if you set the scales, uh, 400 grams. And here is where some of you tell me, Sara, I don't want 400 grams, I only want 200. Okay, you can do that. What happens is if you change the quantities, just because we change the 400 to 200, it's gonna be cooked for two minutes at 100 degrees, reverse speed one. Because I'm going with 200, I don't have to cut the time in half. I'm still gonna leave the two minutes, 100 degrees, reverse and speed one. So if you put the 400, two minutes, 100, reverse and one. But if you put the 200, all we are doing now is mixing the rice with the um, onions. So choose the amount that you want and uh, go with, um, it's gonna be the same instruction. And that's why each recipe is different. So you need to do it a couple of times and see what works for you. So let me put it now for the two minutes. A hundred and reverse. Important that it's reverse so the, the grains are not cut and a speed one. Now I get asked a lot of the times is how do you adapt recipes or how do you create them? What I would say is a rule of maybe reduce the amounts by a third. Always with thermomix, less is more. So if you're gonna be chopping something maybe chop it for less time at a lower speed, maybe a speed three or four. And then if you need, you can add a few more minutes or you can add more speed rather than go three minutes to speed six and then you don't have cabbage anymore, you have a mash. So less is always more. With time is the same. When you're cooking, always try to do less. And then if you need, you can always add up more. Okay, you, you saw that with, uh, I think it was in a couple of the steps that uh, Rachel was doing. So it was like, oh, I'll start for 30 minutes for my potatoes, but sometimes I need to add five more. So when you, add, a lot of people ask me, oh, Sarah, I don't know where to even start. I always say, go and check a recipe that you like, that is similar enough in Cookie Doo, in one of the blogs, somewhere. See how they do it. And then you try to adapt it to what you like. Or if you want to go free styling, I know some of you are really good at that. Always add less and then you can add more afterwards. But I would like to ask you for those of you that actually you adapt recipes or you create your own recipes, what would be the lesson or the advice that you would give to someone that have not started adapting recipes or that are thinking about doing it, but they are afraid? If you can share with us and mute yourselves or if you prefer in the comments, I would like to hear how other people do it as well. Sorry, Tara, okay? before that, we have a question from Noreen. If you could please show better in the camera, I don't know if you can move your phone, how you activate the reverse mode. Okay, uh, I'll do it one second, Noreen, I'll do that for you. Actually, I'm gonna do it with the next step, which is adding the wine. So because the rice is already cooked. We're gonna add the wine. So it's gonna be, look at my, well, let me change it around. So that is my rice already cooked and I'll turn on the light so you see it properly. You see, that was just mixing the rice for the two minutes with the onions, which is what you will do first before you add the wine. For Noreen, so how I did it, I'm gonna do the next step, which is gonna be adding 150 grams of wine. Uh, we're gonna put it for two minutes at 100 degrees and again it's going to be reversed so you see here where we have the blades that is the blades the shape of the blade that is clockwise and chop it if i go and i touch with my finger it changes and it says reverse enable if i need to change it again press on it and it go back to 
uh, reverse have been disabled. Okay, so I'm gonna put the wine and let me put the camera back in the uh, tripod, otherwise I won't be able to do the two things. Okay, so wine is 150 grams. Uh, I'm gonna put the uh, one of the things Rachel said, and I have to say, because the next two minutes we're going to be cooking the wine, if anybody have kids at home and they want to eat the risotto, the alcohol will actually evaporate. So then we'll put 150. And all we're doing in this case, we're going to need to put the, um, the splash card. Okay, so two minutes, put the cover, remove the measuring cup, a splash guard, and we'll do uh, two minutes, a hundred, and then reverse, and a speed, a spoon, or speed one, sorry. Maria, how is your um, memes going? So, as I said, I didn't put too much sugar, uh, no sugar. Uh, so before, uh, and I did it now. So I adjusted, I put a little bit more of uh, the Worcestershire sauce and then salt and pepper, and it's done. I'm going to pour it into my dish. Okay, I'm gonna splash it too much, there we go, okay. Don't worry, that looks like I didn't put as much in. Wait, I said don't worry because all this is going to dry in the oven, okay? And it, it makes really nice. Okay, here we go. And then let's try my potato, it's getting very heavy, I don't know if you can see it. Because another thing, in the recipe, it says 500 grams of potato. I put nearly a kilo because remember, I put more meat in my recipe than what the original recipe said. So you just get, look how fluffy they are. Look how you saw it. They are really fluffy. So I'm going to put that on my, um, on top of my pie. It's really, really fluffy. And then I will put my cheese above, uh, sprinkle the cheese on top, okay? And into the oven for, you can put 30 minutes, half an hour, at 180. And as I said, this is something that is good if you are, you have to rush out the door because you can leave this inside the oven and uh, it will be fine. Now my 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 pan is still so I'll put it over one sec. So remember one trick to remember as well for people who are who don't have the thermometer for very long. When you are cooking things like the potato or for example the the cake that uh, Sarah is doing and the plates get um, uh, you know they are a little bit dirty with something that is uh, sticky. Remember to use the turbo function. I'm going to show you in a minute, that is in here. So that makes that the blades rotate really fast and everything that is stuck on the blades, I think, uh, no, <laughs> everything that is stuck on the blades will go uh, on the walls of the thermomix board. And then it's very easy to collect it with the spatula or to clean it with the spatula. So in that way, you are not wasting anything. Okay, the risotto team. Last step, we're gonna add your stock, if you have a stock cube or if you have made, uh, in the recipe, Rachel uses chicken stock cube. I'm gonna use vegetable stock cube. I'm gonna use the one I made. Uh, so I'm gonna put a big, big spoon and 850 grams of water, okay, 850. And I don't know you, but for me, my kitchen smells lovely from all the wine. How is everybody's kitchen doing? Can you smell it all the aroma from the wine? No, the one thing is because I use a uh, half of the rice, I'm not gonna put the 850, I'm gonna put only 650 in this case. 
Okay, so keep in mind because we did less rice in my case, I'm gonna adapt as well the water. For those of you that are following the recipe with the list of ingredients that we sent you, in this case is 850 grams of water. Now cooking is gonna be 12 minutes. So the recipe that Rachel did is 12 minutes, 100 degrees, reverse again, so you need to set it, and a speed one. So 12 minutes, 100 degrees, reverse speed one. If you are doing less like I am doing, I'm not gonna go for the 12 minutes. I'm gonna go for nine and then check it. And in my case, I'm gonna put it into the friend. So then I can do the cake with those of you that are uh, waiting. I know it's eight o'clock now. I promise you the cake, it takes 20 seconds and Maria's recipe is done as well. So let me place the bowl in the friend. And if the ones are gonna be cooking the cake, Let's get the ingredients ready. So we'll start with the flour. And I know in the recipe, Rachel Allen used 225 grams of plain flour. Uh, I wanted to do a little bit different and I am gonna use rye flour. So I'm gonna use half of white flour and half of rye. Uh, it's gonna look a little bit darker than maybe what you are used to doing apple tart, but I can tell you it is delicious and it's a little bit lighter, the color will be darker, but the flavor and the taste will be a lot lighter. Okay. I love risotto. Cool. Thank you, Martele. Okay, so we'll start with the setting the, the um, scales. The first one, so I'm gonna do, that's my rye, this whole meal rye flour that I got uh, today. I'm gonna use a uh, hundred of these and then 125 of normal flour. I and mean, then while you do that, I'm just going to show you, I did what I told you. It's just, uh, can you see the blades are completely clean? So it's much easier, you are not wasting anything. I just made turbo. So then it's much easier not to collect anything that you have in the thermomix. It can be, as I said, you are doing pesto or if you are doing anything that sticks. And then there's I'm no okay. waste and then it's much easier to clean, okay? Uh, Maria, uh, Mercedes says that um, she loves to make risotto because it's a great excuse to open a bottle of wine. <laughs> and, and Vera, Vera says that she has started to drink the wine and she stopped cooking. <laughs> I love it. I love it too. <laughs> and then Mercedes says that it's important to be fearless unless it is not burnt. It can always be salvaged or adapted. That's a really, really brilliant advice. And I'm going to give you another tip. If you have leftover risotto, you can always do arancini. It's really yes. nice. Yes, they're lovely. That's true. And then Mary says that she's asking for, no, oh, she's giving advice. So reduce water would be Mary's tip because over the years she has learned that, uh, as Sarah said, less is more. So it's better to, be, to have the option to add more water than to have too much water. And then what do you do? You take it out and then you take also flavor out. Thank you everybody for, for the great tips. I love Vera's one, especially. <laughs> Don't cook, just drink. <laughs> and watch well, and watch all the good tips that we are giving you. I'm going to put this in the oven now, okay? <laughs> okay, so while Maria puts it in the oven, we have the flour in, 110 grams of, uh, of sugar. Uh, a quarter of a teaspoon of the um, baking powder. Also 100 grams, 110 grams of butter, one egg. So let me do the butter. Again, click tear. If you need to keep adding more, if you're good at maths, keep adding. So I'm gonna put 110 of the butter and then I am ready to go. So that's my butter. I have to say, I found Rachel puts way too much water for my liking. So instead of 110, I'm gonna put 75, yeah. Um, one in. Hundred grams of milk. And that's it guys, it's so, so simple. So let me put a hundred milk. And it's 20 seconds, we have it.
Okay. So now close my camera. Twenty seconds. Speed five. That's it. Cross out all the scales. And that's your cake done. For those of you that have done the resource, so the 12 minutes should be up nearly now. All you need to do is when it's finished, add the bacon and the cabbage, keep it in the bowl standing for a couple of minutes, maybe two, three, four minutes. It will get really, really nice and creamy and your risotto is made. Maria, your cottage pie is already in the oven with the tart or with the apple tart what we're gonna do with the mixture look at my one it's a little bit darker probably than your one because i use Sorry, it sarah did you do 20 seconds of speed five noreen is asking yeah 20 seconds of speed five for the mix of the cake and look this is what we got and it's a big i think it's called butter in english isn't it so we're gonna use is half we're gonna put it in the tin then we're gonna put the uh squares or chunks of apple and then you're gonna do with a few spoons around like i think the word that um rachel used was blobs which i have never heard before so i learned that putting it around on top what we're gonna do is we're gonna be covering the cake with the other half of the butter so one goes on bottom i tend to maria you gave me this tip when you did the apple tart wasn't it that put more of the butter at the bottom, then the apples yeah. and then the bowl, the blobs on top and then cover it. But a lot of the apples will be seen, isn't it? I mean, I, I, my one the other day was like that and it was really nice. That's correct. That's Because that's how Rachel does it. That's how you did it. I did it as well. And we can show them what is the result because once you have the butter, you have the uh, uh, apples on top covered. It goes into the oven. And uh, that's it, guys. That's your recipe done. Uh, the oven is at 180 degrees. And if I remember correctly, the uh check it for me. I think it was 40 minutes. But again, check your oven because I find you might thinking about the pie. pie. The pie, yeah. How long yes. is in the oven? I, I think it's the steps here. Yeah, the pie is around 40, 40, 40, 40 minutes. 40, 40, 40 minutes, Rachel says, 180 degrees. Yes. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, what's that? For a clean bowl, yep. So what are you doing now, Maria? Rachel did her pie and then she also uh, did some creme anglaise, okay? So for that one, you have a few options. You can do creme anglaise, you can go the custard if you have a TM5, or you can use the thickened function in the TM6 to do the custard or the creme anglaise, okay? So in this case, what we need, I need to get my ingredients. So, one sec. So here again is another tip, tip that I'm going to give you. Just give me one minute of enough sugar. So you know in the way that sometimes when you're doing a cake, you have to grate the sugar and it's a little bit of a pain. So this time you can do that with your Thermomix. So if we go back to the recipe, one sec, it says 60 to 100 grams of sugar. And what it also says is to get the um, very thinly cut the rim of the lemon. You can do that with your potato peeler. So you can put that in and then put in your sugar and the speed go to a high speed to grind it. Or you can put your sugar, we're going to do that for first. It's a, depending how sweet you like it, or anything from 60 to 100 grams of sugar. And then when you are finding um, that sugar, what you do is you throw the pieces of lemon 
through the hole, let's see if you can see it better, one minute. It's my two riches. You throw it through the hole of your thermomix. One minute. <laughs> let's see if you can see this. Now, so then what happens is that they don't get caught in the blade and they grind much better. So we give it a go to this. So I'm going to do that one for 20 seconds when you're doing a coaster, if you want to, uh, or the creme anglaise, and uh, at the speed uh, nine. So my butter is ready. And all you're gonna do is just put the apple on top and the rest of the butter on top again, okay? Sorry, Sarah, can you show us again, sorry? Can you come close to the, oh, you're doing it now. Oh, okay. I'm just putting the apple. So I put a bit of the butter, half of it, the mixture. Yes. On the, and as you can see, okay, I should have a round uh, tin, but I don't, I have a square. So my apple tart is a square. And instead of greasing, know? I don't like greasing the um, containers. So I use the baking paper instead. Lovely. So the batter, I'm putting the, on the um, sorry, the apples, and I'll put the other one on top on the minute. And I'll, I'll show you while Maria is doing the uh, creme anglais. If I continue with my recipe, you can see here my uh, my lemon and my sugar all grinded. And then I'm going to do the next step. And it says to, as what well, I just did, remember every time that you grind high the speed or you chop, with the spatula, bring the things down back into the bottom of the bowl. Mm -hmm. I did that already. And this is just 30 grams uh, of corn flour. You can use corn flour or potato starch. Whatever it's uh, work better for you. One minute. Picture this one. So I'll uh, bring my tear, my scale to zero. There you go. One little. A little bit more. 30. Okay. Then I'm going to go next, and it says two eggs. So one thing that I normally do with eggs is uh, to break them in a um, cup. I like to do that, especially when you're baking, just in case something goes wrong, and then it destroys everything that is inside of the bowl. So you can, you must remember never to break your uh, egg on your thermomix because it affects the scales that are underneath. But you can break your egg on your mixing cup. And this one is an egg with two. So I'm just going to put it here. Can you see? Uh, I try to do it not too. <laughs> As I there, I put my eggs. And then it says 500 grams of milk. I'm going to go for my 500 grams of milk. The good thing of this recipe of uh, with the Costa, it gives you the choice of doing the quantities for half half the recipe uh, for four people, two to four people, or from four to six. So you can decide which one you want depending on the quantity that you need. Because in this one, remember I'm using in the thickening mode. So then I go next. And the only thing that I have to do next is to put my top in my thermal mix, and then that will cook for but the only thing, everything is set up for me. I only have two. Can you see that the that the sign of the uh, dial in the thermomix is like a little cup that you use for sauces? So then you know that you are in the thicker mode. And then you just turn and voila, it will be done in a little while. Okay, so you have the choice 
to uh, serve this uh, Apple card with anything that you want to, with Costa and Anglais. You can also serve it with the lemon core if you prefer, anything that you like. Cream that you can also do in your Thermomix using the butterfly. This butterfly, remember what I used to do with my potatoes is dirty someplace, okay? So you have the different choices. You can pick and, and choose whatever you prefer or whatever you like. Okay. Yeah, like one of the things uh, I like Rachel's example. I went and I follow the recipe and you can see now I have put the blobs as you call it and now I'm gonna stand it and it will go into the oven for the 40 minutes. This one is apple, but you could add as well maybe black currants, you could do uh, apricots, you could do nectarines, any fruit really is the same uh, mixture and then you change the inside to suit your uh, taste. And what Maria said is really good. If you make the creme anglaise, it's a lot thinner. Uh, the one that Rachel did was with vanilla extract. You could use maybe orange zest or lemon zest or star anise, or there is so many things that you can change. So that's one of the things when you start with your thermomix at the start, it's like, okay, I'll follow the recipes in cookie dough. As you start getting more confident, feel free to adapt and uh, follow your own taste. And yeah, as you have seen tonight, Maria and I have changed the recipes pretty much. Uh, it was difficult to stick to Rachel's because both of us are Spanish, maybe uh, the, the flavors were not to our liking. So we twisted and made it not better or worse, but more suitable to our, uh, our, our taste. How is everybody doing? How is done? Some people will be finished now with the uh, risotto, are you eating it, enjoying it? Anything, any comments? My one will be done now in 20 seconds, so I'll have that. My cake is gonna go into the oven and miraculously, Maria, can you check your oven, please? Yes, I'll say, I'll say, I'll say. It's cold already, because I did it before the class. So oh that's my, my oven. Look at that. So you see the first time that we have put more on top, but I think it looks prettier and it's very nice. You can see as Rachel said, the little holes with the apple on it. Then it goes really nice. Uh, Maria, did you use cooking apples or eating apples? The thing, thing ladies that I have normally okay. for the lunches. The eating ones. Yeah. Lovely. So Maria, so is it true? Is it true that um, you are going to do something interesting with that cake tomorrow? <laughs> I don't know that cake will, I think that this cake is not leaving the house. <laughs> but tomorrow, for the first time ever, we are bringing Thermomix to Mahon Point for everybody who would like to have a look. Uh, they are more than welcome or to want to come and talk to us. And uh, we are going to bring little pieces of um, things for you to try, especially for those people who have never seen Thermomix and they don't know what the Thermomix is able to do. And there are a lot of things happening tomorrow because everyone who goes there and give us the names, they will get into a raffle where there are fantastic prizes. One of them is something called a Betty that is um, a stoneware that is fantastic for cooking, especially if you want to do things like bread or lamb shanks. If, uh, if you or look a casserole. Into, yeah. yeah, casserole, yeah. yes. If you look into my own uh, page recipe with Maria's or the group, uh, our cooking journey. I have done many recipes with Betty and it's really nice. So we, we are definitely one cooking. of those and that's 95 euro, but you, yes, can, yes. you are in a chance of getting- I have something. a Betty, will I show them the Betty? Sure. <laughs> so that one is 95 euro, it's manufactured by Vorver. It's the same brand as Thermomix, there you go. It's four liters. So that one would be raffled together we, have, we will have only one bundle, which is the Betty and the Paul, the Paul pizza stock. So if you want to come and see us, we will be in Mahon Point uh, from half 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. tomorrow, and from 11 to 6 on Sunday. And apart from that, ladies, closing words for today. Well, I would like to ask everybody to write in the comments box how are they feeling about adapting their own recipes? Having Rachel here tonight, the comment that she gave us, the advice, what is the feeling tonight after the class to go and start trying your own recipes? How 
I don't know, maybe confident do you feel from one to 10? Because I would like to start getting more ideas from others sharing with us. Let's put so it I like just want to show you this is my lovely appetite. And lovely. this is my different, so I can let it up, my God, it's fine. God, it's fine, Andrea. Yeah, I have the, I have to finish the, the result. I have one more step with the cake. I didn't have a, a time. So training, feeling so much better about freestyling. Okay, good. And Letty and Vera. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. That's lovely. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And Maria, it's always a pleasure when we do this together. Thank so you very much, much, ladies. And everybody who very kindly joined our class tonight. I hope you learned a lot of tips and that you will be using all these recipes. Yeah, say, take uh, pictures and tag Rachel because there is a book for grabs. Yeah. So make sure Thank you, you do it. good night. Have a lovely weekend. Bye bye. bye.